My name is Bella Hallers Alge. I'm professor of developmental neurology at the University Medical Center in Groningen, the Netherlands. I will briefly summarize my paper on the neural substrate and general significance of general movements that was published in the January 2018 issue of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. What was already known about this topic? After the pioneering work of Heinz Prechtel in the 90s of last century, it became very clear that the quality of general movements, especially in the fidgety phase, is a very good predictor of cerebral palsy. New in this article is the proposal of the neural substrate of typical and atypical general movements. Typical general movements, or in short, GMs, are primarily characterized by movement complexity and variation. Complexity means that you explore all the degrees of freedom in all the joints of the body with all possible combinations like this. And variation means that you continue to do so over time. This short clip shows an infant of three months corrected age with normal general movements including the age-specific fidgety movements, the small and dancing movements occurring irregularly all over the body. Here you see an infant with atypical general movements. Atypical general movements are characterized by reduced complexity and variation. This infant is also three months. His movements are simple and stereotyped. They have very limited complexity and variation, and there are no fidgety movements. The child was later diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Now to the neural substrate. Movement complexity and variation emerged already very early in fetal life, that is, already in the ninth to tenth week postmenstrual age. The emergence of movement complexity and variation coincides with the emergence of synaptic activity in the so called cortical substrate. Here you see a transaction through a fetal cortex at 24 weeks gestation. Neurons are produced near the ventricles, at the bottom of the figure. Next, the neurons migrate to more superficial layers of the cortex, to finally end in the cortical plate, CP, at the top of the figure. However, the first generations of neurons do not go there. They hold below the cortical plate to form the cortical subplate. SP on the figure. The cortical subplate is the functionally active fetal cortex. The idea is thus that in early life, general movement complexity and variation are brought about by activity of the subplate. The subplate is, however, a temporary structure. The lower part of the diagram depicts the developmental changes in the subplate. The subplate is thickest between 28 and 34 weeks gestation. Thereafter, the subplate neurons die off and later generated neurons start to populate the cortical plate. Around three months post-term, the subplate has disappeared in the primary motor and sensory areas. The cortical plate has taken over and is now responsible for GM complexity and variation. Thus, if complexity and variation disappear, as is the case in atypical general movements, this means that either the subplate or the cortical plate or their efferent connections are dysfunctional. In the figure, you see 
many Ephraim connections run through the periventricular white matter, here indicated by IZ. The periventricular white matter is the location where brain lesions in preterm infants generally are found. Two other things happen during development. First, around term age, the nervous system is characterized by physiological hyperexcitability, also expressed by the motor neurons. This is indicated by the red phase on the third line. The hyperexcitability coincides with the phase of the so-called rising general movements, with their somewhat forceful nature. Second, developmental changes in the cortical networks turn activity in these networks less intensive and occurring in smaller groups of neurons. This is called sparsification of activity. This is indicated by the line with the increasingly smaller dots. When the hyperexcitability vanishes, the sparsification breaks through the fidgety movements emerge. The absence of fidgety movements implies an interference with this developmental process. In short, this paper suggests that a reduction of movement of Texterian variation may be attributed to dysfunction or damage of the cortical subplate or later of the cortical plate or is Ephraim connection that runs through the periventricular white matter. The absence of fidgety movements implies a developmental disruption of the typical fragmentation of cortical activity.